want to bring in a money manager who's blazing his own trail, Bonson Group CIO, David Bonson. And, you know, David, when I see this, you're one of the first guys I thought about, in part because, uh, you know, you've talked about energy, at least specifically MLPs. But, you know, I, I just I just think these money managers seem to get it wrong so much more than they get it right. Well, and what they're getting wrong is the thing that's motivating them, which is to be safe. It's to stay out of the way and to basically avoid getting fired on a quarterly basis. So I'm even more critical of why they are doing this than what they're doing. It's a safety play that's more about career safety than portfolio safety. Uh, if you look, Charles, since that March 23rd bottom, the stocks that have performed the best have been the ones that were the worst performer in the month of March. And so you've had a total reversal trade. Energy has been a huge performer, top sector. I get why people want to own healthcare right now. And we own some great healthcare names that we owned long before the COVID crisis. But I don't get hiding in the names just because it feels safe to talk about. Let's talk about the, the Federal Reserve. They just put out their minutes. And I want to ask you uh, your, your thoughts on two things that stood out to me. First, we just talked about energy. They, they voiced some serious concerns about an uptick, a major uptick in bankruptcies in that space. We know the rig counts have come down dramatically. Can we keep this, this fracking miracle, this American oil producing miracle alive? And is, is it is still a viable place to be invested? Yeah, so the key is not whether or not fracking is viable. Fracking is absolutely viable, and the shale revolution is going to continue. The question is whether or not some of the smaller players are going to be able to stay in their position, or are they going to have to sell out to the big players or, or sell out to banks out of bankruptcies? The reality is that if they get a little liquidity help through the next year or so, their debt maturity is not out until 2023, 24. Most of the small players can get by at $35 to $50 oil. They obviously couldn't at $20 oil. So I think some of the liquidity provisions the Fed is providing can help some of the smaller players get through and keep them from having to get swallowed up by the Exxons and Chevrons and the private equity players out there. And I think there's still a glimmer of hope that President Trump and the administration will come to the rescue. In fact, I think he retweeted something from Emily Miller, positive about the, the oil industry. The Fed also said that they expected consumer sentiment to decline. Well, the consumer sentiment reading that we got uh, it was the exact opposite of that. In fact, it went up and current conditions led the way. Is there something surprising in your mind about the way consumers are reacting to this, about the optimism that people are feeling about maybe just is, is it a, an American thing or is it legit in your mind? Well, I get so many things wrong. I never want to say I told you so. And you've gotten so much right throughout this covid crisis, Charles. But look. I don't understand people that have been acting as if the consumer all of a sudden <laughs> never wants to go out in public again. It's contrary to everything I know, first of all, about human nature, but second of all, about the American consumer in particular. The idea that Americans are going to literally hide in their bedrooms and never go spend money again is by far the dumbest thing I'm hearing yeah. right now coming out of various analysts' mouth. This consumer is going to spend, David? and even apart from the spending, I gotta leave, we gotta leave it there. Again. We ran out of time, yeah. my friend. We ran out of time. I don't